900 US dollars, 1200 Canadian dollars, 129,000 Japanese yen, 75,000 rupees. No matter how you look at it, the Hexcal Studio is a hell of an expensive desk shelf. Let's talk about it. Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome back to another video. I hope everyone has had a great holiday season and I just wanna wish you all a happy new year. A company called Hexcal reached out to me a few months ago and offered to send over their Hexcal studio for me to review, but didn't tell me what to say. So as always around here, all opinions are my own. I had heard of the Hexcal studio from voices on the internet, but hadn't really looked into it all that much. At 900 US dollars for a desk shelf, this has to be one of the most overkill things I've ever seen for a desk, and that's coming from me. I've used the studio for a number of weeks at this point, and I've been having a hard time coming up with the words I want to say about it. That's because honestly, this is one of the strangest and most unique products I've ever reviewed. Unboxing the Hexcal Studio was an experience in and of itself. The process lets you know along the way that what you're unboxing is something special. Included were three simple instructions to put it together, which really only involved putting the legs on the shelf. An accessory box was included, which had four leg extenders, which I'll cover shortly, and another box with included cables. The studio ships with three separate cables, two USB-A to USB-A data bridging cables, and one USB-C to USB-A firmware upgrade cable. I'll cover the data bridging side more in a moment, but yes, as for the latter, this desk shelf has the ability to have its firmware upgraded for optimal performance. Let that sink in. The leg system is modular and the extenders can raise the legs 1.2 inches higher to allow a wider range of things to be placed underneath it. The legs themselves are made from stainless steel and does contribute to the premium feeling and overall durability of the studio. Lastly, it does come with some reusable cable ties, which is a nice touch. I had two first overwhelming impressions of the studio. First, it's a hefty product that honestly feels like it could withstand a tank driving over it. Apart from the stainless steel legs, the rest of the shelf is made from aircraft grade aluminum, which likely contributes to its overall 22 pounds in weight, which is for comparison, only four pounds lighter than my 38 inch ultra wide. Second was how large it is. It's 47.3 inches wide, so it's something to keep in mind as this does belong on larger desks. For comparison, I did try it out on my 48 inch wide desk, and in my opinion, it looked absolutely ridiculous. The top of the studio is removable by sliding together opposing locks, revealing the inner chamber where you can place whatever you want to hide from sight. The chamber itself is quite spacious, measuring 40 inches long, 6 inches tall, and 1.6 inches high, so there's a fair bit of room to place inside what you want. On the left and right sides are the default locations for the aforementioned leg extenders, and they're easily removable by unscrewing them out of their mounts. On the left side of the chamber are two USB-A power ports, which are for the studio's data bridging feature. Hexcal's data bridging feature basically allows you to access devices that you've placed inside the chamber from the outside. For example, you might choose to put an SSD on the inside of the chamber and then access and transfer data from the outside of the shelf. The inner and outer USB-A power ports are color-coded blue and green, respectively, so you know which devices are connected to specific ports. So as mentioned, Hexcal does provide two USB-A to USB-A data bridging cables, 
which are specially designed to reduce EMI or electromagnetic interference from the outside. This is because EMI can interfere with data transmission. Hexcal does recommend using their provided cables for this reason. Whether you might use this feature or not depends on your setup, but it is pretty cool. Aside from the data bridging ports, there are two other ports on the outside of the studio designed for charging your devices. One is a USB-C power delivery port, which is designed for fast charging compatible devices, and the other is a USB-A quick charge port. The USB-C PD port supports the power delivery protocol and hence is intended for newer devices that support it. USB-C PD, USB-C PD, USB-C power delivery can provide up to 20 volts of power depending on the device. As mentioned, there are eight available outlets on the studio, ideal for plugging in your devices. Four outlets, two on each side, are arranged in a horizontal position, which are designed for plugging in larger adapters. The middle four outlets are vertical, designed for general plugs. The studio has a power supply rating of 1440 watts and has built-in OCP or overcurrent protection. If a short circuit happens, the studio will automatically break the circuit in order to prevent further damage from happening to devices connected to it. When this happens, the reset button, which is on the left-hand side of the studio, will be released. Pressing the reset button back in will manually release OCP, and if there's no longer an overcurrent happening, will remain pressed in. On the right-hand side of the outlets are the power supply controls for both the studio's internal functions and external devices. Both need to be pressed in to get the shelf's electronics working. This is a good thing to have, as it allows for cutting total power off to certain parts of the studio should you need to. The studio uses what's called the 3D Cord Organization System, which is a patented design by Hexcal. It looks like a spine and has a pretty neat aesthetic to it. The idea here is that the system guides your cables through the chambers and prevents them from kinking together. I found everything to be solid here, to the point of getting the cables in and out requiring some level of force. Since I already use a cable management system on my desk, I didn't really feel the need to route cables through the entire shelf, but it is a great way to get most of the cable clutter off your desk. It was helpful in relieving some of the mess on the cable management solution, and once I was done moving some power adapters and cables over to the studio's inner chamber and routed them through the cord organizer, it cleaned things up tremendously. One of the neatest features of the Hexcal Studio is its built-in lighting system. There are several buttons on the front of the shelf that allow you to customize its look and feel. First is the mode button, which allows you to change between different base light presets. It effectively acts as a base anchor to further customize your lights from. Second and third are the save and fave buttons, which allows you to save your current light configuration. Fave then allows you to cycle through your saved presets. Next is the range button, which adjusts the width of the light. The light itself is split into three parts, with the middle section always being on. So range effectively adjusts the light intensity on both sides of the light, and the purpose of this, at least as far as I can tell, is to be more versatile for a variety of desk setups. The last two buttons are intensity and temperature, which adjusts each of those things accordingly. When you press the intensity button, the other buttons themselves become disabled and instead display your current intensity setting. This is the same case for temperature. It's a cool idea and I think it works at least relatively well. There are up to 16 different configuration levels for both intensity and temperature, so there's a lot of variety here. For those wondering, no, there is no RGB here. What's cool about the lighting system is that it has a high color rendering index, 
or CRI, which Hexcal states to be about 95%. This means that the light emitted from the studio is very close to natural sunlight in terms of color accuracy. However, the lighting system isn't without its caveats, and it can take some time to get used to, at least that's what I found. It's not the most intuitive system, and it required me to reread the manual a few times in order to really understand what I was doing. Things like entering and exiting the configuration mode, how presets are saved, and so on. I also ran into a weird issue where pressing the range button changed the temperature levels of the ends of the light bar but kept the temperature level of the middle section of the light bar the same. No matter what I did, I could never get the ends of the light bar to align with the exact temperature again of the center part of the light bar. I found the fix on Hexcal's own FAQ, which involved resetting the power button for the internal power on the studio. Interestingly, they go on to state that if doing that doesn't solve the issue, to go ahead and contact support at Hexcal. So they seem to be aware of the issue, but I guess haven't quite yet fleshed it out of their production line. On the top left is a charger compatible with Qi devices, like most iPhones and AirPods. Personally, although this is a nice feature, it goes unused on my desk. This is because I put my speakers on the shelf, because I like it that way, and also because the shelf is so wide that it's really the only place they can go at this point that makes sense. Because of that, I can't really make use of the charging feature. For me, that's okay because I currently have a charging solution already on my desk, but just keep that in mind in case you're like me and use desktop speakers. So having the Hexcal Studio on my desk for the past several weeks has been really nice, if I'm being honest. Yeah, we got ghost storms right where you were standing, right here. We are at zero degrees, gentlemen. We are at zero. We haven't gone below zero, but we are at zero. I've been able to clean up more of the random cable clutter on my desk, and due to its shape, it hides pretty much anything behind it, while also leaving room for me to put devices underneath it due to the ability to extend its legs. The lighting system, apart from some of its quirks and understanding how parts of it work, is quite cool and during gameplay sessions, I can get away with using just that light in the room. It's really that bright. It illuminates the desk in front of me and overall just provides a nice ambience and mood. For me, it's just tall enough to hide more of the cables on my monitor arm and due to the stainless steel and aircraft grade aluminum, feels extremely premium and durable. The two questions then are, does this product make sense for you? And even if it does, is it worth its price tag? Allow me to rant for a bit. The first consideration to make is the size of your desk. My desk is 60 inches wide and 30 inches deep, and it fit just right. If my desk was any smaller, like I tested it out on my other 48 inch wide desk, it just looks absolutely ridiculous and takes up way too much space. It's subjective, but you need to make sure you have enough room for it to start with. Second is the use of the power supply, which is a big reason to go for something like this. If you don't use many devices, then you're not gonna make use of one of its main features. Third, if you have an existing cable management solution that works well and hides everything for you, then you're probably not gonna find the 3D cord organizer very useful. Though it gave me the ability to spread the load around, so to speak, my existing cable management solution, in all honesty, was working just fine. Where this all ultimately leads to is that the Hexcal Studio has a lot of nice features that, depending on your setup, you may not even use. Look, the Studio is a premium product made from aircraft grade aluminum and stainless steel. It has multiple power outlets, USB ports, wireless charging, advanced cable management, and a high quality lighting system. 
Hexcal has clearly designed this for those who value a high degree of functionality and, let's face it, aesthetic appeal in their workspace. If you're planning to use every feature on the studio, you have the space for it, and feel like it will help your workflow, then I think at least looking into it is worth your time. If you're like me and work from home for a living, then the investment could be worth it. The bottom line here is this is the type of product that if it's for you, you'll know and you don't need someone like me on the internet telling you it's for you. If you have any reservations about buying the Hexcal Studio, then your instincts are probably correct. Whatever you do, as I always say on this channel, always make sure you take your time upgrading your desk setup and only purchase products when it makes sense and is reasonable to do so. That's about all I have for this one, guys. If you're still here, please drop me a fire emoji down in the comments below, just so I can give you a like for sticking around until the end of the video. If you like this video, please remember to hit that like button and please consider subscribing and hitting that bell icon so you know when I release new videos. Doing both of those things really helps me out in growing this channel. I've got more tech, desk setup, and gaming content planned as usual, so please stay tuned for that. As always, thank you very much for watching, happy new year, and I'll catch you in the next one. See ya.